do if somebody close to you, a relative or a friend, told you that they were thinking about ending their life by suicide? What we hope to accomplish in this program today is to help you have the information you need to help them because, as our title says, suicide is preventable, and this is all about preventing suicide. In the next half hour, you're going to meet some people that deal with this every day. My name is Buzz Priestley. I'm a volunteer at uh, the Crisis Clinic. And with us today also is Jody Matson, who is Community Relations uh, with Paulsbo Fire Department. Uh, our go-to person is Kelly Schwab. Kelly is the, uh, is the program manager at the Crisis Clinic of the Peninsulas, which covers Mason, uh, not Mason, but uh, Jefferson, yes, um, Clallam, and Kitsap, and a tiny piece of Pierce, correct? Not officially. Not officially, but we get calls from all over, actually. And finally with us today is Maury Lewis. Maury is with the League of Women Vo Voters of Kitsap, and um, also she is the reason we're here today. Um, two years ago, the League presented a forum that uh, was done at the uh, Paulsbo City Council. There were about 100 people from the communities around Paulsbo and Kitsap that came, and the, the uh, turnout was, quite frankly, uh, pretty astonishing. And it, it also began to identify the need that we have to educate people more about suicide and what can be done about it. Everybody from physicians to students in school, teachers, and your next door neighbor and you. So we want to start today with Maury because uh, the Kitsap Community Suicide Prevention Coalition, which is a long title, uh, is a result of 18 different organizations in, the, in Kitsap coming together to begin this process. So Maury, tell us a little bit about the gestation of what's happened in the two years since the forum that the League of Women Voters presented and how we got here today. Okay. Hi. Um, actually, it started um, back at uh, right after the terrible tragedy at Sandy Hook in Connecticut. And we at the League of Women Voters of Kitsap decided that um, the, the gun issue had to be a discussion point. We had to bring it up for discussion. But um, before doing that, we did some data research first and found that in Kitsap County, um, about 87% of the deaths by firearms are by suicide. And so the guns are not involved that much in the homicides or accidents, it's all suicide. So at that point we shifted mainly to a suicide prevention program. And um, it was a result of that that we had the um, forum on suicide in uh, 2014. And as Buzz said, the, the, the turnout was amazing and the stories that we heard there. And um, that uh, forum is, um, was also recorded by BCAT. And so um, there's a way you can look at that forum. So um, at first, the League of Women Voters was, was doing this, and it started growing and growing it. And then when I opened um, the committee to community members rather than just League members, then it just mushroomed. And we had so many community individuals and organizations that uh, wanted to be a part of this that we took it out of the League. And uh, at that point, it became the Kitsap Community suicide prevention coalition and as buzz said uh, we have about 18 organizations but we have over 280 individuals that um, have signed up to be a part of this and we get input from all of them and what we try and do is um, sort of amplify the efforts that each one of these organizations are doing so that it's just a louder voice that gets out there about the suicide um, and then we have different uh, projects or different efforts. And, and one of the first efforts is we help distribute what we have here, which are the Crisis Clinic of the Peninsula's bookmarks. 
and we have been distributing these all over the county at libraries and coffee houses and etc and it has a lot of uh, important phone numbers on it and then on the back warning signs and what you can do to help so that was one project or is one project that's ongoing and then, of course, the other one was the big um, poster contest we had open to uh, this, any, any student in Kitsap County. And um, we got, uh, and I'll be talking more about that later, but that was another big effort that we had. Um, and uh, I think I'll just wait now and, and we'll be talking about the contest some more down the road. Uh, so. The posters behind us, by the way, are um, the first, second, and third place winning posters. There were scholarships that were associated with that, and we'll also talk about the sponsors of those, yeah. won't we? Yes, we will. <laughs> because if we don't, I will be in real trouble. Right, we'll be talking <laughs> about that. So we're going we're to mention the sponsors. Uh, the first prize on this was uh, 500, second 350, and uh, third prize was um, $200. Mm -hmm. So some very, very nice sponsorships and very much appreciated. Next, we want to have uh, Jody tell us a little bit about the uh, statistics. She uh, turned into our statistical guru in oh. a way, and <laughs> uh, uh, working with uh, coroner's office, state numbers, the statistics make this real, and uh, any loss that can be prevented is one that we really want to work on. So Jody, what do you find? Well, thank you. First of all, I want to acknowledge Greg. Uh, Sandstrom, our Kitsap County coroner, Greg Sandstrom's been uh, key in getting us the local statistics that we need. He's been to a lot of the meetings too. Yes, he's Absolutely. involved I in think the coalition. Every one of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what we have found now is we're pretty much in line with the state as far as um, statewide statistics. Um, we. F um, we, last year was our highest year, though, on record since we've been recording suicides in our county. Um, our highest record prior to this was in 1999 with 44 deaths for the county, deaths by suicide, but last year there were actually 54 deaths. Um, according to Sandstrom, our average is, is usually in the 30s. In 2014, we had 34 deaths by suicide but last year, 54 deaths, and that's, that's quite a bit. And there's a significant number in the north end that's portion huge, of the county. That's a huge jump in one year. Yeah, and boy, as a fire department, as emergency responders, we respond to some pretty tragic calls, not only for suicide, but the attempted suicides. And um, we just want to do everything we can to help end the stigma about talking about mental health issues or talking about depression or uh, just the stigma around, but we'll get into more of that later if, you know, suicide. We want to be able to talk about and do more in, on our part to help prevent it. Because if we were losing this many people a year by, to fire deaths, we'd be all over, you know, doing as much as we can, which we already do as far as fire safety education in the schools. If we're losing this, and we are losing a lot of people to cardiac arrest, that's the number one killer in our country and in our county for adults. Um, so we have big CPR push outreach, but as far as suicide, it's just, it's kind of almost taboo to talk about, but we are losing a significant number of deaths. It's a number two killer for uh, younger age groups. So we need to talk about suicide prevention. And also we need to talk about the fact that you're, there's a lot more behind the scenes that the firefighters are seeing, devastated families, um, devastated individuals for uh, attempted suicides that don't, that don't work, that fail. 19 out of 20 attempted suicides fail, which is, can be really hard when um, it's a gunshot wound that doesn't actually kill the person but leaves lifelong disabilities and tragedies. So, 37% um, of the people who have tried suicide will succeed the second time. Females tend to try three times more often than males, yet males are four times more likely to die by suicide. A lot of times males choose gunshot wounds that are, tend to be very effective. So we want to do whatever we can to um, mitigate that. 
So can I ask um, what the demographics might is? You know, I don't know what the two of you could say. What's the, where, what uh, segment of our population has got the highest numbers? Well, Buzz and I. <laughs> if you want the truth, it's that 45 to 55 age group has the highest. Unfortunately, males. The, uh, males, yes. Unfortunately, seniors, um, while they have a smaller number who are dying, because it's a smaller segment of population, their rate is actually becoming higher. But the people at most risk are, you know, middle-aged white males is really it. Um, there are a number of other groups that come close, but it always comes back to that. And what you said is true, is, is it's because most often men are choosing guns. And uh, there is no second thought or second uh, chance once you pull the trigger. You've either killed yourself or you've hurt yourself severely. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why they, there are more deaths. When women attempt, they are just as uh, driven to, to die. They, 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 they have the same intent as the men. It, is, it comes down to the selection of method. It's the real difference and the only difference. And women's usually? The women tend to choose overdoses more often. So 58% of the people who die from suicide, and that is what it is, is die from suicide because suicide is a mm -hmm. symptom of a mental health condition. 58% of the people who die from suicide do it by gunshot. 2% of the people who attempt and survive do it by gun. 80% of the people who uh, attempt and don't die is by overdose, whereas 20% of the people who do die from suicide have used an overdose. So you can kind of see how the, the, the difference, that's what sways out that, you know, four times, it depends on the statistics you look at and what area you're looking at, but four times is a pretty good number. Um, and that's what really causes it. Kelly, you've been with the crisis clinic for that's getting close to 20 years, isn't it? Well, since 98. Okay. And uh, last year, we celebrated the 50th anniversary. We did. Third oldest crisis clinic in the United States, as a matter of fact. Yes. Awesome. Uh, tell, me, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the crisis clinic related to, to suicides. It, the crisis clinic does a great deal more than just suicides. Right. And uh, where that fits into the crisis clinic and then... What, what do you do when, when somebody calls up and says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about killing myself or I'm in the process of killing myself? So there's, there's a lot to that question. The crisis clinic, first and foremost, is there to provide an empathetic ear to anyone in the community who needs. It's not just for someone who's feeling suicidal because hopefully we would be able to help them before they get to that point. We are part of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline Network. And so we do take a number of suicide calls. It's actually around 15% of our total call volume. Now, uh, when someone calls, every caller is assessed for suicide. And most of the time that means asking, are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about suicide? And it has to be asked that directly. And then if the answer is yes, we try to assess the risk. Do they have a plan? That should always be the second question if they say yes to they, they're, they're thinking about killing themselves. Do you have a plan? Do you have the means available? When are you going to do it? These are direct, concrete questions that should be asked of anyone who is suicidal. And from that, we determine the, the way to help them as, as necessary. If we need to, we will make a safety plan with them to keep them safe. If not, we might refer them to what are called designated mental health professionals who make up a crisis response team for Kitsap County. And if we decide that we're going to have to intervene, then we will come to calling 911. But before we do any of those, we're going to try and build a collaboration, a relationship with the person so that whatever is decided to be done, they are part of that decision. It's not something that happens to them. It's something they are part of they are part of their own survival. And that's an important thing is that, you know, low self-esteem, uh, guilt, 
feeling hopeless, you know, that's all part of becoming suicidal. And so having power in the rescue is a big thing that we can do to help them. So that's what we do. You and I have talked before about how invasive uh, a welfare check or uh, something like a 911 crew showing up mm -hmm. can be. And sometimes that's the only way, but very often, uh, and I, I've had calls where I'd say, would you like me to call 911 for you? Or would you like to call them yourself? And if that decision is made that they will do it, it's, it's exactly what you're talking about, where they take over right. that process. Good. Right. And, you know, it may come to the point where we're going to have to do it with or without their permission, but we're going to make sure they know what's happening. We're not, we're not lying to them. We're, not, we're going to keep them involved in what's going on. Uh, very rarely do we have to intervene without their permission. Uh, most of the time, by the time we get to that point, they're ready to because, you know, they're one of the big things is that most people, well, to varying degrees, everyone who is suicidal is ambivalent about life or death. Oftentimes there's a part of them that believes they must die. It is the only way to get out of the situation they're in, the only way to stop being a burden on their family. It's the only th choice. They, they must die. But there's another part of them over here that says, I don't want to die. Mm. even as they're thinking this. And so that sets up an ambivalence. And sometimes it's weighted more one way or another, but it's that ambivalence that allows us to intervene. Just the mere fact of letting a person know that we're concerned about them and that there is a possibility, a way to get help available to them is that step that they need to get that help. We're going to put up phone numbers in just a little bit of the resources that are available both locally and nationally, uh, mostly local, where people can pick up the phone and get help. The crisis clinic, uh, which Kelly has said many times, is a bump in the road that stops the process, and that's what we do. We stop the process and then the, the, next, the next sequence begins to happen. In, in developing sort of a theme for the poster campaign and also for, for this program, we came up with something that came out of one of, uh, one of Kelly's courses and uh, talking with mm -hmm. Kelly was uh, the first thing we need to do is ask. Ask directly, as you just said. Yeah. The second part is listening. Sometimes listening is uh, the connection that makes the difference. Uh, there's, there's a retired uh, highway patrol officer named Kevin Briggs who's on a TED Talk. And his, uh, his section of the of the territory in uh, San Francisco area was the Golden Gate Bridge and part of Marin. And in 23 years, he talked about, uh, he said hundreds of people back over the rail, lost two right in front of him that jumped. He said those are the two that haunt him. And uh, people would ask him frequently, what did you do to get them back? He said, uh, very honestly, very little. I listened. And then the third part is act. And the acting is what the phone numbers that you're going to see in a few moments are all about because they give the resources of the crisis clinic and uh, uh, the crisis response team, if that's appropriate, at Kitsap Mental Health. Uh, they give the veterans crisis, crisis line, national line that veterans can use. Those very frequently roll over to us, by the way. And uh, the Teen Link Center in, uh, in Seattle, based in yes. Seattle, Kelly? It's their crisis clinic. They're yeah. the second oldest. And uh, then the county emergency service is 911, and sometimes we'll ask somebody, can you drive yourself to the emergency room? And if the answer is yes, uh, then that's, again, empowering them to get to the resource. Or if they have a friend there, sometimes the friend will get them there. So those are resources that are very important, but you're going to hear a lot about the ask, listen, and act of this whole process that is the fundamental thing that can, that you or I or anybody else we know can do to really begin preventing suicide. We're going to just take a moment while you can write some of these numbers down and uh, we're going to reset a little bit and bring our one of our contest winners in and talk about the contest a little bit more and those sponsors because we really appreciate them. <laughs> and also I want to I want to thank before I uh, uh, we, we get too tight for time I want to thank BCAT for the facilities and uh, mm -hmm. allowing us to uh, come in here and for all their help. Great bunch of people to work with. So listen to the music. You'll uh, remember the theme, those of you who are old enough. And uh, we'll be back in just uh, a very short time with, uh, with our guest.
Welcome back. Uh, in our last segment, we hope you got those phone numbers and keep them handy because they're uh, sometimes very handy. And please keep in mind the suicide uh, business that comes into the crisis clinic is a small part. So you can call the crisis clinic for a myriad of reasons, and believe me, there are. So uh, we want to talk about the contest a little bit, and we have a guest with us, Hope. Welcome. Hope Clark is a sophomore at Central Kitsap High Central School. Central Kitsap. Where did you hear about the the um, contest? Um, well, it was actually announced over the morning broadcast for several days, and so that's where I initially heard about it. Then I have several friends actually in the Youth Suicide and Bullying Prevention Club that we have at our school, so I went and talked to them for more information. Good. And this is your poster behind us. Yes. Okay, Maury. Tell us about the, how the contest came together and sure. how, you, how this ended up third. Yes, yes. Um, uh, one of the things that we talked about a lot in our coalition meetings, you know, the mission was to reduce the, both the attempted and uh, deaths by suicide um, in Kitsap County. And so uh, it was obvious that awareness needed to be uh, brought up all across the county. So we were trying to think of ways to do that. And um, we had uh, lots of different suggestions, but one that um, was suggested actually uh, not necessarily during this um, event or this uh, coalition, but even prior to that, was to have a youth uh, suicide prevention poster contest. So um, we started working on that and setting up the rules. And um, one of the, um, uh, well, as Buzz said, there had to be requirements. You know, the basic requirements for these posters was the, the basic motto of ask, listen, and act. And so we set up rules, and, and you see the three posters here. The one in the middle is the first place poster. Uh, but you see they all say ask, listen, and act. And the one on, um, uh, to the right here is the second place poster. The first place was uh, Melanie Peterson. And the second, and she won um, not only $500, but the Hazel Fa Hazelwood Family YMCA also gave her a year's membership. And the second place was won by uh, Anika Tesa, and that's hers. And again, you see the ask listen and act. And the most colorful one here, as you saw before, is Hope's. And she got $200 for this. And um, we couldn't have done this, obviously, without our sponsors. And we got uh, nice donations from the Kiwanis of Greater Polsbo, from the Bremerton Rotary, the East Bremerton Rotary, Blue Sky Printing, and as I said, the, the Hazelwood Family YMCA. And um, you know, without them, we could not have done this at all. Um, I also want to put in a really big plug for the Kitsap Mental Health Services, um, because that's sort of the parent organization of, uh, I think the clinic is, yes. is with them. And also, they uh, are the ones, um, donations can be made to the uh, Kitsap uh, Community Suicide Prevention Coalition if you go to our website, which is kitsapsuicideprevention.org. Uh, um, there is one place there where you can make a donation, or if you mail donations, if you mail a check, and you have the check made out to the Kitsap Mental Health Services, which is a 501c3, Three. I guess, yes. um, it, it'll be tax deductible. So again, we could not do this without the donations. Um, I have a question. Yes, what, yes. While, while you look for that. Hope, what'd you do with the $200? I'm actually saving it. Are you? Yeah, I'm trying to save a lot of money now to put towards like buying a car or anything when I get my license. Good for you. Good for you. Where did you come up with your idea? Well, actually, I just I wanted to, of course, have people on it, <laughs> not just the words. And I I mostly focused on the paper chain of people behind these two. So you can see um, the girl is actually holding a roll of tape while the boy is holding more darker um, outlined person on the paper chain that might signify someone nearing depression, suicide, anything that someone needs to ask them, listen and act toward. So that was the girl reaching out toward him. Nice work. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. 
And I wanted to ask you, how did you hear about the contest? Um, well, it was announced at my school, and okay. I found out more information through some of my friends in our um, suicide and bullying prevention club. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask, um, is suicide a pretty no-no word at the school, or is it becoming something that people are becoming more uh, comfortable to talk about? I think it's becoming um, more easy to talk about, but it is still pretty sensitive just because how sensitive it is to anyone affected by it. But every year at our school, um, the club of youth suicide and bullying prevention, um, they give a presentation in almost every class oh, against good. what mm -hmm. to do if you need to reach out to someone. Right. Hope, thank Great. you very, very much. Really appreciate <laughs> it. In the, in the short time we have left, Kelly, um, we want to get a plug in for getting some volunteers and also Speakers Bureau. So the, the crisis clinic, we said it was the third oldest. It's also all volunteer. And we are always in need of more volunteers. The, in order to volunteer, you don't need a degree. You don't need any special training. We will give you that. You do need the ability to deal in a crisis, to remain calm. Um, the other part that uh, Buzz was talking about is that we want to get the information out to as many places as possible. So we put together a speakers bureau where if an organization wants us to, we will come out and we will talk about suicide prevention, the crisis clinic, whatever they want associated with suicide prevention. And then the other thing is that in Kitsap County, we're very lucky to have an active survivors of suicide group. And if you need any more information about that, you can either go to the Crisis Clinic website, which is where you would go if you wanted to volunteer, or you can call the Crisis Clinic 479-3033, and, and uh, they will be able to help you, put you in connection. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to just thank you, Kelly, for, thank you, everybody, for, for coming. And uh, Jody, you're off in the wings. Thank you. And thank you to BCAV once again. Uh, I'd just like to put a personal plug in for the Crisis Clinic. It's an extremely rewarding experience and um, very worthwhile, and it's a way of helping people that uh, you never realized how much you can touch and make a difference in somebody's life when they need it. So, BCAT, everybody else, those of you watching, uh, tune again for the next program, and we'll bring you a little bit more information about this and keep this going. Thank you. <laughs>